Hello. Hey, hey welcome. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome to our broadcast here. Mental Youth Leadership Live. Let's go. So glad to have you watching, listening, participating today. That's right. Yes. Uh, and my name is Joe Cal, Youth Director, and we have... And I'm Corinne, part of the Pendel Youth team. That is correct. Yeah. Corinne, part, like, what do you actually oversee here in Pendel Youth there, Corinne? Creative Communications and Production. Man, that's a title. Hello. That's a title, Corinne. Wow. Nice job. And we appreciate you, Corinne, being on our team. And I appreciate all of you guys uh, joining us, whether it's live or on the replay. I'm um, excited to share with, you know, uh, some announcements that we got going on. Oh, yeah. uh, we also have our guest host with us. Oh, yeah. Ryan Deal from uh, M-Star Church in Bechtelsville. Yeah. All right. So he'll be joining us in a little bit. just a minute. Um, but anyhow, it is, we're coming up on... November. November. Literally in one day. Like, literally, I can't believe it. I can't it's, either. Um, so the question is, do we celebrate Thanksgiving or do we just go straight to Christmas? Okay, I I <laughs> became passionate about this yesterday. I actually put it on my Instagram <laughs> Did story. you really? I literally I did. So I was like, I'm missing summer a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, I really, I, yeah, I am. I'm mourning summer. Mm. But, so if it can't be summer, it might as well be Christmas. Hey. But I do love Thanksgiving. I love the day of Thanksgiving. I love being thankful. You know, seeing the family, but that's good. But that's like, good. I'm but like, ready now. But like, there's no, as in, it's like there's really no Thanksgiving music. There's like one song I know of. <laughs> yeah, my kids came home singing a gobble gobble song. I said, like, "What is this?" <laughs> so, but Thanksgiving. If it wasn't for Thanksgiving, we would have no deep fried turkey. I know. That's what I'm that. saying. I do love some fried <laughs> turkey, friends. Wow. Um, you know, one time we had a turkey eating contest between Joe and Maria. We I did. think we should do a replay of that this year. I really think we should. Uh, Vote in the comments <laughs> if you <just> think <laughs> we should bring back the turkey, turkey champ con contest. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. And and who you sh who you want to see involved? Yeah. Oh, that? well, yeah. wait. Corinne and Maria, you know, they can do, they can really pound down some turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Maria. She's not even on here to like, defend she, herself. Well, she knows it. She's proud of it. <laughs> um, so at, at one year for, for youth ministry, we did a, um, a turkey bowl. Yeah. And we actually bought a frozen turkey and did like a whole bowling thing. So fun. Um, I think I did that for two years and then I kind of felt bad because I was wasting a turkey. Oh. Yeah. Well, have you ever done that? Um, I've done a turkey bowl, but it was a football tournament. Most people do that. <laughs> <laughs> so not actually the frozen turkey, but did you play um, with the frozen turkey? No. Because I've also Just done that a too. Normal pig skin. Yeah. I mean, we've done that as well. Yeah. So anyhow, <laughs> yeah. turkey bowls. Turkey not sure what you guys do. Football. I went to a Steelers game this weekend and it was really bad. Nice. But I made it on the Jumbotron. Watch out. We are in Pendel. You understand people like the Steelers. Well, I, I don't understand. But they were bad. I mean, I understand. Yeah. But anyway, what good did you stuff. Do this weekend? Hey, it was a good time. Beautiful Saturday. I wasted my whole day Saturday. Sometimes you got to do it. Of painting oh. a dining room table and chairs. Yeah. Mm. So. Anyhow, well, it's going to look on. great. It's going to look great. And I'm going to show you guys a picture <laughs> of it, too. Thanksgiving, Joe. That'd be perfect. That'd be perfect. Yeah. All right. So getting ready. Right. Anyhow, so glad you're on. And I know that God's given uh, Ryan some information for us. Uh, he's also not just a youth pastor. He's been a rep for us um, in both sections now yeah. where he was previously at Walnut Grove. But he's now acting as our East Central Youth Committee rep. Um, and I appreciate him and his heart, not just, uh, not just for ministry, but for family. So, yeah. so welcome Ryan to our podcast, Hi, Zoom, Bill Cast, whatever, not guys. Bill but anyway, man, what's up, my man? What's up guys? Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for taking your time, bro. Um, so how long have you been in youth ministry, Ryan? I've uh, been 16 years, full-time, 16 years. Full-time, 16 years. And, um, you've uh, been what 12 years at your previous one or 13 years yeah it was like 13 and a half years there and i've been here for I don't know, two and a half okay good deal and you're now serving as the family ministry pastor family life family ministry family ministry ah oh, man yeah. i've had the first time <laughs> we practiced you messed yourself up yeah <laughs> you're in your own head <laughs> oh my goodness um so um can i ask you this question what is your favorite thing in youth ministry? Uh, really spending time. Just what you got, bro. First thing 
uh, spending time with students. I still yeah. love it. I still love being with students. I, I've been around a lot of youth pastors who like get sick of spending time with students. And I get it. You go through seasons where you're like, I can do without 14 year old boys for right now. But <laughs> I I still love it though. I still love spending time with them, just getting to know them, go to relationships, discipling them. And uh, yeah, just, I feel like it keeps me young and uh, yeah. just, it keeps, keeps my heart full and keeps me energized. Mm -hmm. Well, you serve well and I appreciate you, man. I'm glad you're Thank part you. of our, our team here. Um, so uh, what do you, what do you have to say for us today, man? What, what has God put on your heart to share? Yeah, I wanted to talk just a little bit about creating culture. And, and this was triggered by a situation I had two weeks ago where I was forced to invite three students to not return to youth group. <laughs> I like I like to say it that way because it sounds better than I kicked three kids out of church. Uh, but I, I'm sure that not everyone here maybe agrees with the policy of kicking kids out of church, and that's okay. Uh, but however, I, I've had more than one instance where it was necessary. And these three students, they were a problem literally 100% of the time they were here uh, over the last two plus years I've been here. So it wasn't a knee jerk reaction. It wasn't just, they didn't know how to act for one day. So I kicked them out, but um, we have a handbook for our youth staff. And in that handbook, we have a list of our rules and, you know, the expectations that we have for both our students and our staff. And we go over them with our staff from time to time, as well as with our students from time to time. And on, on the top of that sheet of expectations, it has the scripture, Hebrews 13, 17, it says, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that will be no benefit for you. So I want to talk a couple minutes about creating culture. I was reading an article recently about culture and business leadership and military leadership, but here are the two points that resonated with me, and, and I'm going to translate them into ministry leadership. The first one was, it's better to employ people than fight people. And the second one was, you have to utilize locals led by professionals on your team. Now, like I said, these are business principles and military principles. But here are my two translations for those two things in creating culture in ministry. The first one, it's better to disciple students than to babysit students. And the second one is, you have to get buy-in from the church kids, which are disciplined by the best staff or best volunteers that you have. Here's what I mean by both of those. First one, better to discipline, or I'm sorry, better to disciple people than to babysit people. Or you could even say better to disciple people than discipline people. It's my goal in ministry to make disciples rather than to build a group. And it, it's also a personal goal that only the adult you know, somebody messes up, somebody needs course corrected, a student needs corrected, that it would be the person that's discipling them that would correct them. That means that their life group leader would be the person that speaks to them when they're messing up. It wouldn't be uh, never me correcting them from the stage, never somebody else correcting them. My goal is that a person that has the best relationship with them would be the one to really speak into their life. And a quick story, while I was at, uh, at my last church, it was, it was a smaller church and there was a point where between the children's pastor and, and the youth group, we were averaging more people under the age of 18 than over the age of 18. It, it's not really the financial way to grow a church, but things were exploding in the next gen area. And we were driving three 15 pastor vans to pick students up every week for youth group and sometimes making more than one trip. And we may or may not have seated more than 15 at a time, unofficially and off the record. Uh, but our normal church kids and the kids from the neighborhood were also coming along with many kids that were very unchurched. And every week, if I'm honest, was a battle. It felt most Wednesdays more like we were babysitting than discipling. And God spoke clearly to me and said, are you making a group or are you making disciples? And the truth was I was making a group. And I was in this weird place where we were having so many students that had no church experience that I couldn't preach messages to my stronger Christian students. I couldn't preach salvation messages every week. So I ended up preaching kind of to the middle. And because I was preaching to the middle, I was hitting nobody. I was preaching to not my church kids and not my unchurched kids. And we made a conscious and a calculated effort to switch our programming and our strategy and start making disciples. 
and we lost almost 75% of our attendance seemingly overnight. And we slowly grew back, but it was a long haul. It was a lot of work. And we went from babysitting to discipling, and it was worth that culture shift. And the second thing is you have to get buy-in from the church kids, which are discipled by your best staff and volunteers. The best way to create a culture is to disciple your church kids, the kids that already come, the kids that have grown up in the church, and, and for them to become a thermostat rather than being a thermometer. But when they're a thermometer, they just come to you complaining about what's going on that they don't like. And then those complaints trickle down to their parents who complain even louder. <laughs> and when they are a thermostat, they set the tem- temperature for your ministry. And you want your best students setting the culture for your ministry. This means being intentional about you know figuring out who are your students that you see leadership potential in and getting your best staff to disciple them. This isn't about picking favorites, but it's about seeing the students that you personally see leadership potential in them and who you can build up. This is the first Corinthians 11, one model, which just says, follow me, or I'm sorry, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And none of this is possible without you first figuring out the culture that you want to create. You have to decide between you and God, the culture you want to create. And listen, you will have a culture in your ministry. Either you create it or someone else will create it for you. But make no mistake, there will be a culture, whether you create it, your students create it, or some other some other adults in the room create it. And I read this story about this guy named Charles Napier, which probably most of you have never heard of, but he was the commander in chief and a British general in India in the 1800s. And at that time, the Hindus were practicing this this thing called sati, S-A-T-I, which is known its wife burning. So when a husband died, they would burn the wife alive as a sacrifice to their gods and for a sacrifice to the husbands. And it was, they said it was a sacrifice, but really it was because they wanted women to have no rights and they wanted women to not get the inheritance of the, the husband. So this guy, Charles Napier, he comes from England to India, and he, he notices this huge pile of wood, like a bonfire. And he's like, hey, what's going on here? And they said that this Indian noble had died, and they were going to burn his wife the next day. That night, he had his forces erect gallows all around that pile. And he came in the morning when all of them showed up to burn this woman. And this is his quote. He said, be it so. This burning of widows is your custom prepare the funeral pile. But my nation also has customs. When men burn women alive, we hang them. We confiscate their property. My carpenters shall therefore erect gibbets, which are gallows, on which to hang all concerned when the women or when the widow is consumed. Let us all act according to our national customs. And after this, Safi ended. They no longer burn women alive. And basically what he said was, you have a culture and we have a culture. And when you're here or when we're here, you're going to obey by our culture. We're going to create the culture. And we we have to be confident enough in our culture that we create, that we are willing to draw hard lines in the sand to stick to them. Because in the end, it will help us accomplish what God wants for all of us. And that's to go and make disciples. That's a good word, bro. It's good. I think um, I love how you say. Wow. First of all, that story is like yeah. mind blowing. Crazy. The reality of that to take place, but that's so true. Um, mm. I think it's important that you take control and initiate the culture, right? I mean, because if we don't, then it's going to be created for you. And then you're going to be like figuring out what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I kind of uh, attributed to the fact of like, if you don't, confidently walk in the calling that god's put you there you know someone else is going to come alongside and like mm-hmm. try to take over and not and not in a mischievous way but it's just someone's got to take initiative yeah. right in leading and shepherding so that's pretty awesome wow for for hearing what you said um what were uh you said uh it's better to disciple than to babysit which i'm 100 percent. i love that analogy and i because let me tell you i think uh there's many times like man i refuse like you don't want to just come, even when we we're raising up youth leaders, we're not babysitting here. Like, that's not the idea. Because if that's the idea, we can go do something different, you know? Um, but uh, what did you do as you said there was a shift 
that you had to make um because i'm sure you're not the only person that tried to just build a group you know um so like what was that shit i know is is a, a god moment for you which is pretty awesome um but what are some tangible things that maybe you did like okay well i, I did this but now i'm not gonna do that anymore can you give us a little bit yeah um well the first one was stop preaching to the middle because i wasn't hitting anybody so i i kind of lived by uh, a rising tide lifts all boats and i started preaching to my students that really needed to grow and my expectation was the ones that weren't growing would either step up or move on and you know that seems harsh but when you're not making disciples you're just you end up babysitting so uh, i i started preaching um more uh, message with more meat probably and i uh, started really focusing on our life groups or our small groups whatever you call it and uh, that our leaders would really disciple our students and that it, they would spend time together and you know that's still a still something i carry on to this day that it's really high priority in our ministry ryan how did you get your leaders to jump on with you to get behind well, you? yeah yeah, sure. Uh, part of it was easy because I was like, hey, we're going to stop babysitting. And they were sick of that, too. You know, oh, <laughs> but no. really, really was casting the vision for them that, you know, we're not making disciples and the best use of your time. They they have a million other things they could be doing on a Wednesday night. The best use of your time is making a lasting impact on a, on a student's life, not being here for crowd control. So when they saw that they had a role in really discipling students, that they, they really bought in. Yeah, I'm always reminded. I think I was with you when you shared with me that you had to tell those kids not to go or not to come back, right, for a season. Um, I'm always reminded, like the rich young ruler comes to Jesus, and he says, "What do I need to do?" You know, like I've done all that, right? And then Jesus tells him, "Well, no, go ahead and go sell everything, and then come back." And then the Bible specific, specifically says that, like, the man walked away sad. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in scripture does it say Jesus says, well, okay, well, maybe I'll make an excuse for you, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, maybe like the reality is like everyone is not going to yeah, be a part. Yeah. yeah. And and I think we have to be as leaders. It hurts, mm -hmm. but I think we have to be okay with that. Yeah. It's like a weird okay. It's not really being okay. I, I yeah. wish the rich young roller did do what God mm -hmm. said, right? Yeah. But otherwise, they're in control and they're gonna they're gonna mess up the culture that God's put mm -hmm. you to kind of create where you're at. Yeah. So hmm. that's good. Yeah. That's a good really word. It's a good word. Um, last question. Um, yeah, an expectations handbook or student handbook. Um, I don't know. Could you, is it possible like to share that? To share that somehow? Whether you drop it in the link in our comments after the video, whatever. Um sure. and that's, yeah, so I'm sure yeah, as a youth pastor, I would have loved to have my hands on something like that. Yeah. Um, or without having to create it. So I had a handbook too. And, and one of the things that I loved about that is kind of what you touched on, Ryan, that they're already knowing what their expectations are to be a part of this community. Mm -hmm. So when they're acting outside of that, you can say, Hey, you, you already, you signed that you were okay with this, that this is what you were adhering to. So I'm just going to remind you of that before you keep going crazy. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and the flip side of that is I always say it's unfair to expect people to act Oh, they don't even know they're supposed to act. Oh, so we, we we can't be mad at people if they don't know the rules. We need they need to know. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Man, you're the man, bro. That was good work. Praise God. Thank you for sharing, dude. Um, so we have some announcements. We do to talk about um, some things coming up. Uh, first off, this week in two days, Thursday is our youth pastor retreat. I'm ready. So it's gonna be a great time. Um, yeah. So. All you guys joining, man. It's going to be awesome. Ryan will be there if you want to pick his brain. There you go. Hey, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> right, Ryan? I'll be there, and I'd love to talk to anybody. Uh, Ryan, you're, you're the best. Um, <laughs> hey, so you can still register. Yeah, if you can still register. Yet, we want you to be there. Come hang out. I, I, I And I know we say this about all the stuff. We, everything we do, we, we have high expectations mm -hmm. of like anticipation what God's going to do. Um, but I just know Youth Pastor Retreat is a unique a uniqueness to it like mm -hmm. people are coming some are coming to literally be refreshed some are coming to build camaraderie mm -hmm. you know so all you guys that are coming it's gonna be a wonderful time yeah. um and i hope that you make this part of your annual calendar yeah let's just say that i just know even yeah. just been praying as a team and i'm excited about 
um, what we believe the Lord's going to do. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'd like to add this. They didn't, they didn't pay me to say this and they didn't even know it was going to. My wife next weekend is going away to the beach with her friends for the weekend. And um, this is my weekend to get away. And I choose to go to Youth Pastor Retreat because it's valuable and I love it. I, I could go to the beach. I could go do something else with friends, but I value Youth Pastor Retreat and it's worth going to. Valid. You know what would be the best if Youth Pastor's Retreat was at the beach? Whoa. Hey. But that's... Um, yeah, good old BCC, but there are some fun things going on. There is. Um, there and is. we won't even be there the whole time. No, we're going to do a um, trip. We're going to do a field trip yeah. to the bowling alley, do rock and bowl. Uh, if you guys have ever done that before with your groups. I love uh, that. It's going to be a great time. Get ready. Uh, word on the street is Mike Kubis, our Youth Live Missionary, is a like he has his hardcore bowling ball. bowler. We had no clue. We learned this like two hours ago, too. So <laughs> Also, um, Joe was on a bowling league. Yeah, but mine was a joke. <laughs> mine was a joke. <laughs> So anyhow, it's gonna be a lot of fun, and um, and we have Pastor Steve Richie. He'll be sharing the word. Uh, Kurt's coming to help lead us worship, and um, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's gonna be a good time. So and then also Fine Arts big update um, that in this year, 2024, coming you know and going forward, we are actually gonna do digital fine arts entries. Well, oh, sorry, registration. It's registration. all digital. It is yeah. in person. It is live, but registration is digital. Yes, my bad. I jacked that up. All, right. was confusing. all the registration is uh, going to be digital. That's not, we can't register yet digitally, you know, um, but all the information is on our website and then be able to uh, register will come soon. Yeah. So, uh, so anyhow, so that should, uh, again, as we said before, hopefully um, it'll streamline our process to creating a schedule um, mm -hmm. that we can get the schedule into all the youth pastors hands faster than we've done in the past. Um, and also it would uh, cut down on some user error. Yeah. Let me let me um, translate it from paper to the computer. So yeah. that should work. Okay, we have two deadlines coming up this week. So tomorrow is the deadline to join our team for the discounted price at the Next Gen Conference in 2024. Yes. Um, if you want to be a part of the discounted price, which is a $99 registration, which is already like 50 bucks off and it's only going to continue to climb. Mm -hmm. um, you must contact Maria today or tomorrow. Yes. And after that, you're on your own. You're on your own. You're on your own. Okay. And I will say, like, we have a we have a decent squad going, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Pendel represent deep, so. Yeah. And then uh, our other deadline is for the AIM trip to NYSEM, and that deadline is November 3rd. The, it must be postmarked by November yes. 3rd. This is a paper application. That's right. It is. So. It is. And NYSEM is a... A ministry center in New York City that helps to go helps launch teams like us that were coming in uh, to evangelize in the streets in New York City. Yeah. So lots of lots of other opportunities there as you participate. So hopefully you guys come on that. Yeah. All that information again on PendleYouth.com. Yep. And then uh, winter retreat that's already live. Wow. So we already have groups registering for winter retreat. Yep. So we have three weeks. Excited. We have uh, Kyle Draw speaking, Gavin Brown speaking, and then Elise Wood on week three. So. Uh, we're excited for what God's going to do there. Oh, yeah. And then... Um, hey, Speed the Light, uh, end of your giving deadline is on December 11th. So it's coming. We have one month. Let's go. Get that final uh, push to your groups to get all that um, they have planned for and have devoted themselves to give yeah. um, all of their pledges. We want to get those in. Yeah. So December 11th, it must be postmarked to our office here. That's good. And then um, Camp 2024, all that information, it costs. It's currently getting all finalized. Yes. Yeah, so, but hope is December 1st, right? Oh, definitely. Oh, December 1st, definitely. In the words of Corinne. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Listen, we're already more than halfway there. <laughs> um, where you guys can jump on and get information. Registration yeah. won't open until when? February 1st. February 1st. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, looking for that. Yeah. And then uh, one last thing. Last but not least, Speed the Light Zooms. Uh, we have the national next gen missions, missions guy, uh, Eric Hoffman. He's going to be on some special Zooms for us on uh, November 7th. That's a Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. and then again, 6 o'clock p.m. And uh, he'll be giving us some vision, yep. um, encouraging us. And then we'll also get some more info about 
speed of light in Pendel. Yeah. And, and I would say this, if you're on, if you've listened into this and stuff and you're like, man, what is speed of light? Or like, how do I get involved? How do I get my students giving, you know, um, what are some opportunities coming forward? Like, this is a great moment to take advantage of getting on the zoom with Eric, because Eric yeah. can give you us a lot of information. Um, and we're offering it two different times because mm-hmm. I know some of you are bivocational. Um, so please, I just can't stress that enough. Like you want to learn my heart is that, and I think this came across after convention or in the midst of planning convention, um, is that students would all participate in giving to Speed of Life. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because as they start to give, it doesn't have to be, it's not about the huge goal of getting a million dollars. Like the goal is that students start giving before they graduate high school. Yeah. They become a lifetime giver. Like that's they the understand goal. understand sacrificial yeah. generosity. Yeah. So, so anyhow, so I think these Zooms could be beneficial as we hopefully see that happen here in Pendel. So, yeah. but that's all, all we that, got. that's all we got folks. Um, Ryan, could you close us out in a word of prayer, bud? Absolutely. Father God, thank you so much for Pendel youth and all these uh, fine people. And I pray you just bless each of our ministries. God, as uh, we do create the culture in our own ministries and God, as uh, our Pendel youth team creates the culture for our network. And God, I just thank you for what you're doing in each of our ministries. We pray that you will continue to be honored, glorified in the center of it all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks so much, Ryan. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. See some of you guys Thursday for Youth Pass Retreat. So take care. See you later. See you guys.